Good evening, folks, and welcome to Garbage Theater. Tonight's installment, Velasa Pastor. I'm your host, Chase, with my co-hosts, Blake and John. Uh, and also with you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? All right. <laughs> well, before we, we get into it, uh, I got a little something I got to say. Um, it appears... I uh, may owe Red Lobster an apology. No, uh -oh. no, no, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> because six days after the dreaded event. You went back. No. <laughs> my dad comes down <laughs> with the exact same thing. So it couldn't have been the food poisoning from Red Lobster. It was more than likely the stomach flu. No, no, no. Because no. <laughs> it was exact same symptoms, exact same horrific events uh, <laughs> maybe he got neurovirus from somewhere else <laughs> yeah like how so when was when when did you contact your your dad where did you go to dinner together or something yes or we, like, were all, we all went to to lunch at the red lobster at the same time it was at lunch yes what an idiot <laughs> who goes to lunch at red lobster well, Ian, look, you got a long John look, Silver's I'm, for lunch. I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry, but that's that's an <laughs> asshole move. Going to the fucking Red Lobster at lunch. I'm not the one on trial here. Red Lobster. Well, oh yes, is. you are. Actually, they're not because I'm I'm trying to apologize here because it wasn't food poisoning. <laughs> now, please, Red Lobster. So last, give us the endorsement. <laughs> last time on the show, I went off on a tirade about Red Lobster, and I'm sorry, everybody, because I think it was actually just the stomach flu. What you got from Red Lobster? <laughs> I, well, I can't prove that. I'm not backing down on this. Fuck Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> well. It, 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 I'll never, Red, I'll never forgive them for this shit. Red Lobster, no. it, take my, take my apology or leave it. That's all I have to say. Mo moving on. Take, take his <laughs> apology and shove it up your fucking ass, Red Lobster. I, do, <laughs> I hope uh, CEO Fred Lobster is like uh, <laughs> a tear running down his cheek right now. Fred Lobster. <laughs> Uh, so, anyway, that uh, that uncomfortableness out of the way. Uh, uh, let's get this shit show on the road. Yeah. Woo! Velocipaster. Surprisingly enjoyable. Fantastic movie. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Like, this is the way you make a uh, self-aware shitty movie. Yes. John said this off air at when we were all taking turns watching it. And th he said, this is what happens when you try to make like a were rooster or something and succeed. Right. Yeah. This is, this is what all these other movies aspire to be. Yes. Yeah. It's bad, but it was never trying to be anything but. And I knew it, I was going to like this movie immediately. <laughs> It happens pretty early on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two minutes in. Yeah. Maybe it, even less. It sets the yeah. tone. Yeah, let, 30 seconds, maybe. <laughs> I'm glad we're all we're all on the same page there, because yeah. it won me over right then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, like, the, it's really interesting, too. Like, I can't quite pinpoint what this does right that those other movies do wrong, because, um... In, in a lot of ways, it doesn't really, like, go so far in terms of being a parody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not really a parody when concepts like this are so commonplace. Yeah. Um, and uh, it doesn't, this, like, doesn't play to me as a really heightened concept <laughs> anymore because <laughs> we've seen so many of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but the I think what works is there are, like, actual jokes that are actually funny mm -hmm. that exist, like, outside of it being a parody. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, like things like the the there's a, a crappy mannequin head in the movie, 
and that's like not really a joke we've seen that in carnage <laughs> like yeah, they yeah. just do that <laughs> it's like it's more of a pastiche than like a a, a parody yeah hold um, on stop <laughs> Not using those five dollar words again. <laughs> the fuck, some pastiche. Pastiche is like making something in the form of uh, something else, like oh. like a like a, trying to make a movie in the style of like a seventies movie or whatever. I thought that was like uh, the the mustache that they put on the mannequin head <laughs> was the pastiche. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, it was it. Okay, so where rooster? There's there's the, also a really sorry. There's also a really weird uh, mixture of uh, competent filmmaking and and them trying to replicate the incompetent filmmaking yes. of yeah. other low budget movies. And it's hard sometimes. I'm not sure what's on purpose and what isn't. Mm -hmm. um, it's like but, when we watched Where Rooster and they had the whole clown death scene. Yeah, I'm convinced that was a total accidental hilarious moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> because that moment stood alone in that movie as something that i actually laughed at but why just that one moment i, I don't know you know this, some people yeah this had things like that throughout where i was laughing like of course of course putting that wig on that guy was intentional <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I don't know. Take notes, other other fighting shit in the woods movies. Is I guess all <laughs> yeah. I have to say. Because <laughs> I I was worried going into this one that this was going to be too self aware, but I was I was pleasantly surprised. It was it was it was fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I, I thought that it would be. I was worried about that too. It's just for me, I couldn't pass up on the title of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exceptional title. Yeah. Yeah. And then I I totally forgot the the tagline to the movie whenever I was going over it. Yeah. It was uh he's a man of the claw. <laughs> uh, this legit. movie has everything. <laughs> yeah, it does. So they even you successfully guys... pulled off the not showing the shark until the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then when they do, it's spectacular. Yes, it truly it's just is. as good as Jaws. Fabulous. <laughs> so, um, did you guys watch the? Uh, so, I, did, I was doing a little research, and this movie was based on a, a short film, like a trailer. Yeah, I saw, he made a I trailer. Saw, yeah. I saw in the uh, you, the credits that he he said thanks to everyone who worked on the original trailer. Yeah, did you guys watch the trailer? No, fuck no. <laughs> All right. Well, it's pretty interesting <laughs> to see how it developed from yeah, just an idea that he had in uh, film school to like a, a full movie. Yeah. Oh, the trailer uh, took itself more seriously and was kind of like, a, again, like a grindhouse. It had a real grindhouse style with like the film grain and everything. And the, the guy so with the really more, had more of a voice. pastiche on it. <laughs> it was it was actually even more of a pastiche okay. <laughs> than the final film ended up being. But um. quick, uh, quick little side note: I found out why there's so much dog shit on Amazon Prime. It's because oh, really? apparently that's where all the film colleges dump all their movies. <laughs> so we've just been watching the college film projects. Yes, <laughs> three years. Apparently, that's what happens. So. There you go. I don't know how or by what means, but I read something online that said that, yeah, all those barely movies that you see on Amazon Prime, that's just the the runoff of film college. So wait a minute, does the does the college like retain the rights to the films the kids made? I don't I know. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I have no idea. I didn't go into the details. I just thought that was an interesting little... I would love to think that a certain director doesn't get paid a fucking dime off of what he put on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. So, we open to the titular pastor doing his pastor thing in church. Uh, the first thing I notice, is this even a real pastor shirt? No. It looks like a black shirt with a piece of masking tape over the collar. 
I you think can... it's I think it's a Halloween costume. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because you can see where it ties up in the back. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which and, also and, uh, like they're going out of, like going out of their way to be intentional about it, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think also on, uh, from the I think this is the same costume that was used in the original trailer. Okay. Because of how beat up they are. Mm. Like <laughs> he's had them just like beaten around in a trunk for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and he just pulled them out to make this move. So the pastor finishes his sermon and goes outside and sees his mom and dad across the street. Oh, hey, mom and dad. And they wave <laughs> at each other for a little while. And then an explosion rings out. And the pastor's <laughs> stunned as we cut to an empty scene with just the words VFX car on fire written across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so at this at this point I, I was still like mm, I don't know if you've earned this yet movie you're just jumping into this right out of the out, off the off the bat we'll see we'll oh, see I was all in. <laughs> yeah it got me I was I, I was like I was not expecting it to go like to the meta stuff yes yeah. immediately so later Pastor Doug is being uh comforted by his uh his uh other pastor his head pastor Colleague. the lead pa i don't know i don't know the ranks uh who who sits he's him captain down. he's captain of the church uh he sits him down and tells him look doug uh, pa parents die it's what parents do <laughs> okay i'm coming around <laughs> so doug questions his faith and says that he doesn't know what to believe anymore so Pastor, T Pastor Stewart pours Doug some more wine to drown his sorrows. And Stewart says, Doug, you should travel and do some soul searching and travel to where God won't find follow. And if you find God there, well, then you've got your faith back. So Doug montages away across the countryside. And my, my cynical ass is like, is he going to the Vatican? But <laughs> do <laughs> So... He treks as well. <laughs> he it's a it's a credit sequence. Yes, of him driving a car. Yeah, <laughs> which I forgot about that. But God, I laughed through that whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to say, like, I really liked the music in the movie. Yes. Yep. I thought it was I thought it was great music. Did mm. you listen to the lyrics? Yeah, I had the subtitles on the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good stuff. So he's trekking through the woods into China, apparently, because he drove to China, he, guys. Yeah, <laughs> it just blasts China on the screen, so you know where you are. Uh, <laughs> a woman runs through the woods in traditional, stereotypical Chinese garb. Yeah, uh, a mysterious figure knocks an arrow and lets it loose and shoots her in the back. And My son straight up has this bow and arrow. <laughs> Got it for Christmas two years ago. <laughs> right out of the CVS. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, uh, Doug, meanwhile, is marveling at his compass to realize that, huh, China is east after all. <laughs> <laughs> he just drove east. I love the part where, uh, so the big old, you know, chunky lettering says China on it. Right. Um, and then <laughs> he walks through the woods, and then there's a shot of him just like look marveling, and he's like China, <laughs> and, like we didn't get it. <laughs> so the woman collapses at his feet. She gives him what appears to be a dinosaur tooth, and she tells him to destroy it or they'll hunt him forever. And he doesn't understand because she's speaking Chinese, and she mutters "Dragon Warrior" to him in English before she dies. <laughs> Then a ninja appears. Oh, those Chinese ninjas. And <laughs> Doug stumbles back, and he accidentally cuts himself with, uh, open with the tooth. That his Cuts his hand open, and he passes out. But he soon wakes up, and he's back with Pastor Stewart in the States. Uh, it, was, it was all a dream, but all that happened. But he's been dreaming about that event ever since. He got back, somehow. Uh, Doug says that he's feeling hungry. And Stuart gives him some food before very awkwardly hugging Doug and heading out. <laughs> Once again, hilarious. <laughs> uh, 
D- Doug heads out into the street to get some air, and a homeless man begs him for some change. But I, I have nothing to give you. I have no earthly possessions, and he runs away. Uh, <laughs> then we we meet a new character. A prostitute comes strutting by, and Doug bumps into her and runs away. She gives a dollar to the homeless man who praises her as an angel. She's the prostitute with a heart of gold. <laughs> uh, Carol, the prostitute, goes and finds her her pimp, uh, budget Tony <laughs> Clifton over here. <laughs> <laughs> and she, he gives her a slap for her troubles, and he demands that she call him by his pimp name, Frankie Mermaid, because he's swimming in bitches. <laughs> This guy's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he is pretty fantastic. He sends her off to trick in the park because that's where the real money's at. And he proceeds to laugh like a maniac for five minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fantastic. That night, Doug stumbling around the park, groaning in pain, and he lets out a roar as his eyes turn reptilian. And Carol arrives in the park and lights up a cigarette, and the man jumps her and puts a gun to her head and tells her, give me all your money or your life. And as they argue back and forth, the man's attacked by a goddamn dinosaur. (laughs) (laughs) He's knocked to the ground as the dinosaur starts clawing at him. All we see is the head in the hands of the dinosaur. And he's firing randomly around as he lays on the ground, getting torn to pieces. Uh, He manages to get to his feet and starts firing off shots at the dinosaur in a very strange fashion, cocking the pistol with every shot like it's a shotgun or something. Yeah, Yeah, that was weird. I wanted to get mad at it, but I couldn't. (laughs) (laughs) And so the dinosaur just kind of whacks his head off with its head. (laughs) It's true. Carol falls to the ground as a mannequin head rolls by her. We're going to see this mannequin head several times. Yes. <laughs> they got they got their money's worth out of this this uh, barbershop practice head. <laughs> Cut to Doug, waking up from another nightmare. Carol comes into the room, and she, she brought him back to, his, to her house. She offers him some tea, and she tells him that last night was amazing. And he gets all freaked out and says that this can never happen again. He's thinking that they had sex, but she's talking about turning into a dinosaur. Right. Uh, common mistake. Uh, he says that he remembers some kind of nightmare and some kind of lust for flesh. And she tells him that, you know, you turn into a dinosaur. And he says, I don't believe it because dinosaurs never existed. And even if they did, I couldn't possibly have turned into one. So she says, I can prove it. I can take you to the woods and show you the body. They head out into the woods. And <laughs> Wait a minute. He, he's naked. In yes. the bed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And before they, before they head out, he's like, do you have anything I can wear? Yeah. <laughs> so, cut to him wearing just, like, a woman's sweater. <laughs> a, a, like, a long sweater. And yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. pulled pull down just barely past his junk. <laughs> just in the woods. So she tells him that, you know, she's a hooker and he takes great offense to this. Uh, she tells him that he saved her life and this, it, that it's probably the best thing he's ever done. And that, you know, this situation may not be such a bad thing. She says that, you know, you can go, you can target the really bad people because she knows a lot of bad people. And she asks him for his help, but he refuses and he runs off into the woods trying to keep that skirt down <laughs> past his ass. <laughs> Fantastic. Later, Genuinely funny. Just yes. like, just yeah, funny stuff. Yeah. So far, so good. Uh, later, Doug, in his, back in his pastor garb, runs into the church. He's late, and he runs into the confessional because it's his turn to do that. And Frankie Mermaid's in there to confess. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is this big scene right here. Yep. <laughs> And he goes, he goes off confessing that ah, I stole candy from this baby, then I threw the baby in the river, and uh, I'm a pimp and uh, so it, I'm so a it drug couldn't dealer. snitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a pimp and a drug dealer. Oh, and a murderer too. And <laughs> he finally confesses that uh, 
uh, last the last people he killed was an old couple right in front of this here church. In fact, <laughs> and it, it shows <laughs> the parents waving and the, and the explosion and all, and then he's just like standing a few feet away, <laughs> <laughs> like laughing maniacally, rubbing his hands together. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he got a, he said he got a hard on too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Doug starts to transform in anger, and a dinosaur claw crashes through the confessional and grabs Frankie. Doug demands Frankie tell him who ordered that his parents be killed, and Frankie says tells Doug that you have no idea how far these these people's reach are, and you should just kill me now. So. Doug does it and rips Frankie's neck open, and Frankie puts on an Oscar-worthy performance as he <laughs> dies for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> Screaming in pain, the camera's snap-zooming all over the goddamn place. <laughs> we go back to Carol's. There's a knock at the door. She answers to find Doug, and he asks her, uh, what what kind of plan that she has that they're going to go through with this? She says, "Well, we, we we should have rules to this." And she says that uh, that she, she says, "I don't know much about God." And he says, "Well, I don't know much about dinosaurs." <laughs> <laughs> he tells her that his parents were murdered and that he just killed their murderer just now. And he says that how, how good it felt to kill Frankie Mermaid. And she freaks out about Frankie Mermaid and embraces Doug and thanks him for killing him. And so they both agree to only hurt the bad people. High five, montage, ice cream, <laughs> hand holding, <laughs> workouts, karate, dinosaurs, Jesus. <laughs> it's a good montage. It's it a, really is. It's a pretty damn good one. Uh, well, a good song over it. Um, <laughs> Intercut with stained glass windows. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Uh, Pretty good. Cut back to China, maybe, where we meet Master Wei Chen and his band of Caucasian ninjas. I was like, <laughs> the ninjas were some of my favorite part of the movie. Yes, yeah, the ninjas were great. Like, right. Once they started talking, it was like, all right, this is awesome. <laughs> once they started doing anything, <laughs> the whole it really it felt like uh, Richard Harrison should be like showing up any time now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to. I, I feel like I'm speeding through this, but I I can't wait to talk about the final fight. Uh, so he's got this band of ninjas, and they're all practicing in the woods. And uh, Chen wants to know why the the flow of money has stopped. And uh, his Caucasian ninja flunky number one tells him that the fabled dragon warrior has been mucking up the works. And he says that a new shipment of cocaine is on the way. And once they deal with the dragon warrior, they'll be unstoppable. <laughs> Cue a laughing montage that I don't know if I can explain <laughs> to give it justice. It was... It started <laughs> off where I didn't think it was funny. <laughs> it just... It was like they said, okay, we're gonna make it go for way too long right. to where they're like, okay, that's enough. But then we're gonna make it go for another three minutes. Well, And yeah. then it's gonna be funny by that point. <laughs> And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> like, when it first started, I was like, all right, fellas, this is getting kind of cheesy. And when it kept going, <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm chuckling, too, you know? Well, like, the as it kept going, their, like, laughs became more and more bizarre. Yeah, totally different yeah. laughs and everything. It was awesome. <laughs> it's like they were, they were doing the, the, the camera laughs, and then there was like, okay, we cut, and now they're laughing at the laughing. And then it right. picked right back up into the camera laughs again, like seamlessly. <laughs> <laughs> so, meanwhile, Pastor Stewart catches Doug flirting with Carol on the street. And he doesn't approve of this. He scowls. Uh, later, he catches Doug reading dinosaur books, which Doug tries to hide inside <laughs> of a much smaller <laughs> Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart asks what's going on, and Doug tells him that he's different. Really different. I was kind of dense about this. Like, why would he have to hide the dinosaur books? <laughs> like, but then I was like, oh, like, I totally forgot that he was a priest. Yeah. yeah. But what do you know that? Like, 
the whole time I was like, what the, who cares if he's reading about dinosaurs? But then, <laughs> oh, got it. That's as bad as watching the Flintstones. <laughs> as, a, as, as a former Catholic, <laughs> I generally, I think, like, Catholics accept <laughs> the age of the earth and all this stuff. That yeah, dinosaurs they were real. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. No, there were bones planted by the devil. <laughs> so we cut and over the cut Doug confesses it catches uh, Stuart up to what's going on and Stuart says that you know there's, there's something wrong with your head you must need an exorcism or something and Doug argues that no I'm on a mission from God Father Stuart says that they need to rid Doug of, of this Carol girl and he locks him in the church uh, so Doug thinks back to his parents <laughs> As they all laugh over breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody told the dopest joke right before we cut to them. <laughs> right. And mom says that, you know, uh, we're, we're so happy with your life decisions, Doug. And dad says, you're my only son and I'm so proud of you. All that's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man. So, and then it cuts to Doug and his dad in the car by themselves. They're in the car alone. There's no one else in the car. Also important. Uh, they're dropping him off at quote unquote priest college. <laughs> <laughs> Where his dad's telling him about, about how proud he is and he's becoming a priest and, you know, always have faith and blah, blah, blah. And that we'll pick you up from priest college later. Meanwhile, while he's daydreaming about all that, Carol's waiting for Doug outside, but he never comes out, so she gives up and leaves. Later... How you gonna do that, Doug? <laughs> later, Stuart takes Doug somewhere so they can, use, they can go and use evil to fight evil. And they <laughs> enter what seems to be a voodoo lair, and they meet up with Father Jones, a.k.a. Altair. Yeah. Who's a practicing <laughs> exorcist, and I think he has elf ears. I can't tell. <laughs> He does. They're pointy, yeah, for sure. He's got pointy ears. Uh, Doug explains to Altair what's going on as Stuart recall <laughs> as Stuart recalls the last time that he had to go to Altair, last time he saw him during the war. <laughs> the best flashback in a movie we've ever seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we flash back to the Vietnam War. Where Stuart and Altier are marching through the woods in their army fatigues, and Stuart is the same old guy he was, but with a bad blonde wig on, and it's great. <laughs> it's super, super good. It looks like the that guy from Blink One Eighty Two and that GIF, that what the fuck GIF. <laughs> yeah. So Stuart shows Altier a photo of of. Uh, Adeline, his sweetheart, back home, who he's fighting for. Uh, and once the war's over, I'm going to head home and settle down with her and start a family. And Altier tells him that, you know, you should have five or five to eleven kids. And I want you to spend 15 minutes a day with each of them. <laughs> <laughs> Father of the year over here. Uh, he tells Stuart to name one of the kids after him and immediately gets shot in the chest. <laughs> So, later, Stuart's <laughs> sitting down, and he's trying to write a letter to Altier's parents, and he actually, he puts dot, dot, dot in the letter when he can't think of what to write next. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, did the guy die? Like, that's... Okay, who knows? They never explain why he's still alive. Was it Altier, though? Yeah. Uh, yes, was it, it was just him. A... All right, well, that's that's an element of the joke that I missed. <laughs> it makes it funnier. <laughs> that he, yeah, that he died and then he they is this, alive again. They do this elaborate flashback and never get around to the point of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as he's sitting there writing the letter, he looks up and Adeline appears in the, in the, in the jungle of Vietnam. And she calls out <laughs> to him. He's like, Oh, it's Adeline. She's here. And she runs to him with open arms, and he stands there with his arms open, and she gets about a foot from him, steps on a landmine, and is instantly liquefied. <laughs> <laughs> All over him. Just, and just <laughs> hoses him, drenches him with, with blood. 
and he's just standing there with his arms wide, <laughs> mouth agape, covered in blood, as the two other soldiers start making wisecracks about Dude, it. Dude, that was the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think she was here? She probably was meeting somebody. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> it reminded me of uh, on South Park when the two two rednecks are talking about the uh, the Stevie Nicks yeah. singer at the, the bowling alley. No, well, that's... call herself Steamy Nicks. <laughs> what fur? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> goes up there, shits her britches. <laughs> so, so flashback over. That's all you needed to know. Right. Back at Altier's, they prepare a ritual, and Altier dons his ritual cape and ritual key necklace, and he starts speaking a strange language, and Doug says that he feels empty inside, but that, no, that's not right. It's something else, and he starts to struggle, and he says that he feels hungry and screams out and begins to transform, and his hands turn into dinosaur hands, and he rips Stuart's eye out of his head. And- <laughs> Just to point out, Doug jumps up and he's like, r- like bent over and snarling and writhing around, and he's just got these Halloween dinosaur hands on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like complete dog shit. <laughs> and so, uh, Doug growls at Alistair, and he runs from the building. And Alistair says, "The hounds of hell are truly loose now." More crazy laughing. <laughs> then he laughs for some reason. Uh, Agent of chaos, this one. Yeah. Later, Doug's running through the woods again as the the uh, the outback ninjas show up. Crikey! <laughs> <laughs> the Australian ninja got me real good. <laughs> <laughs> so, as the Australian ninja is explaining the plan of what they're going to do, Oh, we zoom in on just some <laughs> random fucking ninja and we get another meaningful back flashback <laughs> to this nameless goon <laughs> when he the love of his life told him that this is the way he would die <laughs> like, okay <laughs> movie you got me you fully got me this is fantastic <laughs> and the way he's just looking out into the desert <laughs> He's in the background, and it just starts to slowly zoom in on him <laughs> while the other guy's talking. It's great. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so they all charge, and Doug transforms, and he makes short work out of them. Back at Carol's. Also, I thought it was funny. When they find him in the woods, they use the same footage from the beginning of the movie when he was walking through the woods. It's the same stretch <laughs> of woods. <laughs> Like yeah. whenever he, you know, in the beginning, yeah, he walks and he grabs onto the branch and he mm-hmm. growls and you see the the contact lenses he's got in yeah. and all that. Yeah, they did the same. It's the same scene over. <laughs> <laughs> Why shoot it again? It's the same thing. Well, he's doing the same thing once again. They they know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. That's just an observation about <laughs> low budget movies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Back at Carol's, she comes home to find Doug huddled in her apartment, and she tells him that, uh... No. <laughs> she comes in, she doesn't know anybody's in there, and he emerges from the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was huddled. <laughs> so, uh, he tells her that he thinks he accidentally killed Father Stewart, and he's panicking, that he, he never wants to hurt, he never wanted to hurt anyone in the first place. And uh, Carol calms him down by making sweet, sweet split screen love to him. So yes. many sc- split screens. <laughs> <laughs> An almost unnecessary amount of split screens. <laughs> it gets to the point where it splits the, sc- the screen into, into eight frames that start to pan. And then the space in between the frames becomes a frame yeah. showing the stained glass, and it's flashing to the beats of the music, and it's fantastic. It's like a little music video. Yeah. <laughs> and then it flashes back through the entire movie. 
<laughs> it plays the entire movie front to now at super fast speed. Uh, the next morning, they wake up to ninjas jumping in the room. <laughs> Just diving through all the windows. They both spring up and fight all the ninjas off in their underwear. And uh, the, last, the last ninja that they've got down on the ground... Uh, tells Doug to remember remember his faith in uh, Father Jones, and Doug finds a crucifix on him. Christian ninjas. <laughs> I thought it was funny that they did the the trope of just all of a sudden they knew how to fight. Yeah, like the hooker and him just all of a sudden no kung fu. Yep, <laughs> done. <laughs> Cuts away Chen. Who you has... know what this reminded me of actually? Now that I've watched The Witcher. Uh... <laughs> It's like when Geralt's trying to find Ciri, and that that one uh, Nilfgaardian uh, soldier just starts quoting nonsense at him. Mm-hmm. It's been so long since I watched it, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Chase watched it last year when it came out, John. Yeah. <laughs> Have you finished it? I've been busy. I have one episode left. Come Jesus on. Christ. I'm a busy dude. I got this, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Oh, shit. Uh, So, cut to Wei Chen, who has Father Stewart still alive, now sporting a stylish eye patch. Over his glasses. (laughs) Over his glasses. (laughs) Chen tells Stewart that they're at the St. Artemis Academy, which is a tent in the woods. (laughs) (laughs) What was the deal with the bundle of sticks? I don't know. <laughs> Did y'all notice that? Every no. scene in this area, they had it was the same bundle of sticks wrapped around with a white cloth. That was their and prop. <laughs> it was outside of the tent, then it was inside of the tent, but it always was there. <laughs> that was their one prop. What are you going to do, have an empty scene? I don't know. I didn't know if it was some sort of pistachio or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so he shows Stuart their cocaine operation. And what what does smuggling drugs have to do with Christianity? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Stuart then uh calls them inhuman because they're wanting to convert all the unwilling people by getting them hooked on drugs so that they have to turn to a higher power. <laughs> Oh shit! So uh, Stewart doesn't. Stewart calls him inhuman for doing this. So Chin stabs him and kills him, and the the parchment that they're holding that has their evil plan written on it bursts into flames for unknown reasons. It's all that cocaine. <laughs> cut, back, cut back to Doug, who says in voiceover, "Good thing that last ninja told us their hiding place before he died." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Carol and Doug head out, and they're soon at St. Artemis Academy. The ninjas appear, and the head Caucasian ninja reveals himself to be Doug's brother, Sam. Okay, (laughs) let me just stop. (laughs) Okay, when he said his brother, it's like, all right, I get it, it's cheesy. But then they went down this, the most brilliant fucking... (laughs) M. Night Shyamalan (laughs) twist you could ever throw in this movie. It was fucking brilliant. They cut back to the breakfast scene where they're sitting at the table, Doug, his mom, and his dad, and they're all laughing, and they say the same thing. I'm so proud of you, son. And and the dad goes, you're my only son, and I'm so damn proud of you. (laughs) And they're laughing, and it slow pans over to Sam just standing in the doorway scowling at (laughs) him. Oh my god. And then when yeah, they- it's funny, like the first time they showed that scene there was a fourth place setting that was empty. Oh shit, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> that was and I was like, why was that there? <laughs> <laughs> and then they cut to them dropping him off at Pat at uh priest college. <laughs> and they he gets out the car and leaves, and then Sam pops up in the backseat scowling again. <laughs> 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 Uh, 
fantastic. This movie had no business being like no. on our show. <laughs> None. Like like, yeah, like we a... said before, we don't get to gush very often, but this one was a surprise. Yeah, big surprise. Uh, so the battle begins, and Sam refuses to use his ancestral sword, and he throws it in the ground. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> He pulls out a sword from his back, and it's it's his ancestral sword. He refuses to use it. He's like going to sully it with, with Doug's blood. He throws it on the ground. And then there's a, a brief kerfuffle, and then <laughs> Sam decides to go for the sword anyway. But Doug then uses the fucking force to <laughs> levitate it to him and grabs it. And he says, your ancestors are my ancestors. <laughs> and then stabs his brother dead with it. <laughs> As blood just rains down on him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so much blood. <laughs> yeah. Carol then starts uh, karateing the ninjas herself, and she takes out a few of them. When another ninja calls out to uh, a higher tier ninja, I guess, who comes out with the sword. And he just kind of cuts Carol down. She doesn't really try to do anything. Uh, <laughs> she hits the ground. Doug rushes to her side. And while he's holding her and they're saying their goodbyes, the ninjas are all watching in the background. And they're starting to get emotional. <laughs> 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 Doug tells Carol that he loves her. And Carol tells him that you'll, you'll win if you just have faith. And she dies. And the ninjas are taking it the hardest of all. <laughs> they're like, they're holding on to each other. And they're, they're rubbing each other on the back. And they're starting to hold back tears. The, honestly, like, this, the, the, the ninjas acting is just... Yeah. This is great. It was like comedic gold it right was there. All, it's all body language because their faces are covered up. And somehow they managed to not make it cheesy. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was good. It was it was funny. Like I don't. And maybe what made this movie good was it was actually people who knew how to act, mm -hmm. as opposed to the guy who happens to have the thing we need to get the movie done. So let's put him in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I think that's mm. I think that's important. I mean, their the acting is not like good in a traditional way but it's like perfect for what they're doing here yes. they know, it, i would have a hard time believing that any of those ninjas didn't go to some sort of film school <laughs> <laughs> like they knew what they knew what their purpose was and what they were trying to convey mm -hmm. even though it was so stupid and simple they, they knew their motivation oh man <laughs> so doug screams out to the ninjas that praying won't save their lives and he transforms into the raptor and it's fantastic oh my god oh, well, i loved I, I loved the part hold on <laughs> the part where he his paws yeah. oh yeah we forgot his really about long that. paws and the ninjas are standing around like waiting for him to finish his sentence yeah, they're looking at their <laughs> watch and shit <laughs> i love that they're like looking around uh, so, your lies. <laughs> he transforms into the raptor and it's the dumpiest looking raptor possible looks it's, like a, looks like, like absolute they, dog shit it's like they took the body of of grimace yeah and just put a raptor face on where his face is yeah oh my was, god it was just shaped like a potato with a, <laughs> With a dinosaur head and a big tail. And it was, it was great because nothing was obscuring your view of this thing. It's just oh, on no. the field. <laughs> there yeah, it in is. Day, broad daylight. Yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> it's they just, gone, gone and went and done it. It's just kind of <laughs> hopping around and twisting around. The, like, <laughs> the crotch is, like, totally yeah. blown out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pieces hanging off of it. <laughs> And it's just it's just decimating these ninjas. <laughs> uh, the music's great. The fight music's great. The whole fight's great. Watch this movie. 
<laughs> I think it's streaming on pretty much everything right now. Oh Net- my gosh. Netflix, Amazon, everything. Go watch it. Uh, <laughs> so, Doug kills all the ninjas, and Chen fires off an arrow that hits Doug in the leg and breaks the film, turning him back into a human. <laughs> Chen says that there was a time in China where they were overrun with lizard warriors until they found this anti-venom to turn the tide. (laughs) (laughs) To which Doug leans in to gloat, to gloat, uh, no, uh, Chen leans in to gloat at Doug as he's laying there in pain, and Doug whispers up, my hand is immune, and he grabs (laughs) Chen with a raptor hand and rips his head off screaming. (laughs) <laughs> and it's just the mannequin head. <laughs> they like glued bl- glued eyebrows on it. <laughs> <laughs> he rips it off and holds it over his head, screaming his blood spraying everywhere. And the film freezes, <laughs> and a quote is put up over the movie. Only through the elimination of violence will we finally be able to achieve world peace. Gandhi. <laughs> That's just a Miami connection reference right there. (laughs) So the movie snaps back into motion as Doug remembers Carol. Cut to a hospital where the doctor, unencumbered by his head mirror that they look through, John. Yes. (laughs) I accept the truth of this. (laughs) Tells Doug that Carol's going to make a full recovery. She's going to be fine. And Doug runs to her, and she says that she's fine. And the movie says, she's fine. <laughs> you know what? Something else about this movie, as the, as it was ending that I was thinking, what a, a lot of times these shitty movies fall into is they'll use the same kind of jokes over and over. This thing mm. didn't throw the same punch twice. Yeah. You know? They could have done, like, these laughing things over and over. They only did it the once. They could have done the VFX thing over and over. But they they did it once. Did it once. So, and the whole, I'm fine, she's fine, like, that (laughs) only happened once. So, they knew it. They, I can't say it enough. They knew what they were doing here. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, like you said, like the VFX thing, they would have overused that. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't have been as funny. The right touch was needed. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, well, it's a delicate film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's amazing is that it is like it's doing this this sort of parody thing, but it's also a low budget movie. Yeah. It, right. I mean, it was only it was thirty five thousand dollars to make this thing. Worth so every like, penny. Yeah. Worth every penny. And like really nailed it. And I hope I hope this guy's not getting fucked over by some film school. Yeah. I hope he's getting every bit of the streaming money, whatever mm-hmm. it is. <laughs> so later, Doug and Carol decide to take on the job of wiping out the scum of the earth. Now that he's resigned from the church and he's got a billion dollar bounty on his head. <laughs> <laughs> by who? <laughs> they kiss and the credits roll. Yes. Bravo. Hooray. Fantastic movie. <laughs> so like good. There's, um, like this, I'm so, I, I know it's early. This is getting a nomination. I, I think it's safe to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the, at the very least, uh, and apologies too. Mm-hmm. Oh, at the least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. thing may just sweep the whole award show and get its own fucking award named after it. Who knows? No, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's possible too. Which that's a high honor when you get an award named mm-hmm. after. Yeah, I, I don't feel like there's too many in the pipe that could win an award that named after this. You know, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I it would have to be an uh, an award in the vein of this is clearly going to be a dog shit movie, and right, it's not. Wow. Like Swamp Ape Two, tough. and it turns out to be great. <laughs> <laughs> now this, I, I can't say enough about it. Like, I honestly would watch this again, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I started watching it again <laughs> <laughs> about halfway through. Yeah, good, good job. Shit. 
Good job, guys. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Time for business. Time for the quiz, John Blake. Yeah, yeah. I hope y'all are ready for some real bullshit questions. Oh, uh, of course. Of course. Well, right, wouldn't it be? All right. Like, I really dug for some bullshit on this one. I only have six, so hopefully we don't have a tiebreaker. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. need a tiebreaker. <laughs> so, whenever uh, the Velocipast is reading his books about dinosaurs, who is the author of the book All About Dinosaurs? Oh, no. I actually know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew the title of the book, but not who wrote the fucking yeah. thing. Uh, question two. Who sat on his own grenade? That was in the the war flashback. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm going to have to guess at one of the names. We talked about this, about number three, but it's going to require y'all to do some quick math before I go to the next one. How long will Father Stewart have to spend total each day with his kids if he keeps his word to his wartime buddy? Wait, because he gave him a range of kids. Uh, no, he didn't, actually. <clears throat> Alright, question number five. When talking to the doctor at the end of the movie with the thing that you look through, John, <laughs> mm -hmm. there was figurines on the, the table next to it. How many of the Native American figurines are holding bows and arrows? Jesus Christ. Uh, question four or five? This is five. Yeah, question five. five. I might have said five, but who cares? Uh, what model car does the Velocipaster drive? Oh, what was it? Oh, come on, it's a classic car. I know, I just can't, the name's eluding me. Yeah, you'll kick yourself in the ass. All right, y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> who is the author of All About Dinosaurs? Andrews. Uh, Alan Grant. It's Andrews. Yeah. Who sat on his own grenade? <laughs> I don't know. Lewis? Andrew Martin? Andrew Martin! Whoa! Yeah! Uh, how long will Father Stewart have to spend total with each day with his kids? 165 minutes. Uh, break it down to hours, because uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> hours and minutes. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't Girl, know. Do mine, I can't do mine's a, an hour 15. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> okay. It's two hours and 45 minutes. If that math works out for you, Chase, I'll give you the point. But I'm it's not two, No, know. it's not. Okay. It doesn't it's work out. two hours out. and 45 minutes. How many Native American figurines are holding bows and arrows? Zero. It's a trick question. One. One. Oh, yes. One was my first guess, and then I overthought it. Damn it. What model car does the Velocipaster drive? A uh, Chevy a Cavalier. A Charger? It's a Chevelle. Chevelle. Chevelle, god damn. Chevelle SS. God damn, I only got one. I should have got two. I knew the goddamn Indian was one. Shit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my tiebreaker was probably the most obvious Blake question in there was what hymns were, uh, in the church. Oh, it was like 172 yeah, was, and uh, 3... Uh, 172 76. and 396. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saved that for the tiebreaker because I was like, they're going to see that and know immediately. Oh, Blake's going to ask that question. <laughs> so, John's pulled ahead with five points. Blake's got two, I've got one. Ooh, that's exciting. Mm. No, it's not. Too bad it's only episode two. <laughs> True. Uh, 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 God. So what you got, John? Coming attractions. All right, motherfuckers. <sighs> We're gonna be watching Standing Ovation from 2010. Mm. It's got a 3.5 on Amazon, 3.2 on IMDb, a 22 Metacritic score, and a 6% on Rotten Tomatoes. Damn. 
Shit. It's directed by Stuart Raffel, who directed Ice Pirates and Mac and Me. Oh, no. <laughs> Why couldn't we watch Ice Pirates? Uh, it's an hour and 45 minutes, starring no one of note, rated PG for some rude humor. <laughs> Five junior high school friends form a singing group called The Five Ovations to compete in a national music video contest for a cash prize of $1 million. With limited funds and resources, these street-smart kids use their wits, courage, and passion to create spectacular song and dance numbers that compete with their arch-rivals, the Wiggies. Five rich, talented, and unscrupulous sisters who, along with their parents, will stop at nothing to win the competition. You see what he's doing, huh? For some he's, reason on he's, IMDb... He's trying to force you to use it. This isn't a John pick. For some, for some reason on IMDb, there's a photo of Dan Haggerty at an event for this film. <laughs> <laughs> Is he in it? Uh, no. <laughs> he's just standing in front of a wall full of posters for this movie. He just, this happened, movie. He just happened to be going through the dumpster of that theater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This movie famously bombed super duper hard. <laughs> um, and there's also a photo of Josh Brolin that's <laughs> captioned Josh Brolin at an event for standing ovation, but there's nothing in the photo to indicate anything like that, that he's at <laughs> an event for this movie. I, th uh, I, I think this is all a ploy, Chase. He's trying to force you because this is not a John pick. <laughs> this has this isn't anything scary. It's not gory. I'm pretty sure a PG movie isn't going to have them titties. This is not a John pick. So let me get some, some reviews here. No, you see how... You see? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't fall for his trap. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you're going to have to watch this thing. Uh, you know, It's not going to be fun. Uh, reviews. What? <laughs> this movie was horrible. Neither myself... Or my 10-year-old could make it all the way through this movie. It was very poorly written and acted. It was boring, and half the time, it didn't make any sense. One star. Uh, kind of like watching a Disney musical without the production values or talent. Oh, Jesus. One star. <laughs> um, Mick LaSalle of the San Francisco Chronicle says, Standing Ovation is an innovative film in the sense that every minute or so, it comes up with a different way of being annoying. <laughs> Did you say? Did you say Nick Lasalle? Mick. Oh, because I went to school with a Nick Lasalle. I was about to say, holy <laughs> shit. And uh, Joe Layden of Variety says, despite its absurdly optimistic title, Standing Ovation deserves a resounding chorus of booze. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Oh. So yeah, you guys want to watch some uh, some teens? Do I'm on song and John. dance numbers. Uh, I'm on to you. you. Ain't fooling me. You ain't pulling the wool over the eyes of this Gambini. <laughs> well, John, you took all the joy out of it, but by the power of man, <laughs> damn it! Yes. God damn it! Oh, yeah, 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 yes. yes. Son of a bitch, Chase. Bang down. <laughs> I was, How can I be the smart one in this situation? Okay. <laughs> I was always going to do it this episode. <laughs> I had been planning on doing this the day after we recorded Axe Drive. Good for you. <laughs> Go celebrate with a Red Lobster lunch. You <laughs> dumb son of a bitch. Now, yes, I'm pissed that he took the joy out of me doing it. He's probably found a fucking Neil Breen movie. Oh, you are so stupid, Chase. God damn okay, it. Okay, okay, look. I found a Golden Van Damme movie, and I could not wait to watch it. And at the, the day I found it, I was looking at it, I was so excited, I read the, the, the synopsis and said, this is perfect. And then I saw that it was leaving Prime two days ago. And I was oh, like, no. I, and I was crushed. And so I said, well, oh, well, I have to find something else. I'm not going to do it this episode. And then the first came around, and it got renewed on Prime. 
<laughs> so I was like, I gotta celebrate now. I have to do it. Oh, and then this son of a bitch here. <laughs> you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait a couple weeks. No, I, I really want to watch this. Well, you guys, well played, you guys would have been miserable. Honestly, this movie is. This sounded terrible. Well it's played. Miserable. <laughs> Well played. You know, did what he wanted me to do or not, I don't think we would have oh, wanted to watch this. You did exactly what he wanted you to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, it's gone. It's done. It's uh, over. I'm Van so Dam- mad. Van Damocles. So fucking mad. I, I wanted John, I wanted that to blow up in his face where he'd have to watch that stupid movie that I know he did not want to watch one bit. <laughs> Well, guess what? I didn't want to watch it either. So, God damn it. I do, however, want to watch this. Are you ready? Do you, do you want to hear it? No. Yes. No, yes. This, this show is a, supposed to be about me and you fucking John at every chance we get. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I'm taking the, the high road and I'm doing something for myself because I want to watch this. Okay. Self-care. So, we will be watching... The 2001 science fiction thriller, Replicant. Boo! (laughs) Rated R. An hour and 40 minutes. He just became his own worst enemy. (laughs) What? (laughs) With a budget of... (laughs) Oh, wait. With a budget of $17 million and a worldwide gross of only 895K. Oof. (laughs) Directed by Ringo Lam, a Hong Kong director who also, who directed Chow Yun Fat in Full Contact, but also directed JCVD in Maximum Risk and in In Hell. Starring Jean Claude Van Damme, Michael Rooker, and Catherine Dent. Okay, here we go. Synopsis: This movie is batshit crazy. Jake Riley, played by Michael Rooker. A Seattle detective has spent three years in pursuit of Edward the Torch Garot, a serial killer. (laughs) Jesus Christ. A serial killer with a penchant for lighting his victims on fire. Yes, Van Damme plays Garot. Right before Riley's retirement, the torch strikes again. Riley, now off the case, is approached by a government agency working on a top secret project designed to bring Garot to justice. What did they do? They've cloned Garot from the DNA left at crime <laughs> scenes and hire Why Riley. Have they done this? And hire Riley to train the replicant who has faded memories and a telepathic link to Garot. The catch? <laughs> While the replicant has the body of a 40 year old, he has the mind of a child. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> It's a race against time as the replicant tries to understand the world, life, and his connection to Garot, while Riley needs to use the replicant's abilities to track down the killer before Garot's killer instinct surfaces in The Replicant. Holy shit. Reviews. Van Damme on the lam. Viewer's gonna need a cardiogram. The most god-awful piece of crap ever. <laughs> Dignity is a funny thing. <laughs> and I've got, I've got one more that I have to read the whole thing up. Hang on. Let me pull it up. Okay. It's, it's on IMDb. It's 10 out of 10 stars by <laughs> PK Maiden. How can it get any better than this? Replicant is one of the best films by Van Damme. Ringo Lamb has done a great job with this picture. Van Damme plays the retarded replicant. (laughs) And and the serial killer Torch. I have never seen anyone play retarded better than Van Damme in this film. (laughs) Jesus Christ. The fun is that the retard can fight. How anyone can dislike this film, I really don't understand. It don't get better than this. I know what you're thinking. He's just a stupid, diehard Van Damme fan. Yes, I am. (laughs) You wrote this thing. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Trivia. Uh, This is JCVD's fourth film where he plays a dual role. 
I was about to say, he's, we've, he's done this before, right? Time Cop, Double Impact, and Maximum Risk. Oh, God. <laughs> now tell me that doesn't sound perfect. It, you, it, it, doesn't Sounds great. Get, it doesn't get much more batshit than that. Yeah, and it could have been saved for uh, a couple weeks from now. <laughs> and Van or Dan- you could be watching Standing Ovation right now. <laughs> yeah. It'd be worth it. And Van Damme, <laughs> uh, as the as the torch, pretty much much looks like he's doing uh, Tommy Wiseau cosplay. Oh man, <laughs> what? You know, I would have I would have been less mad at you if you would have said, "Okay, it's going away from Prime in a couple of days." Okay, but the fact that it went away and it came back, and you know it's going to be there, I'm I'm celebrating because oh, no. <laughs> I thought I had lost it. You did lose it. <laughs> Every ounce of my respect, you've lost it. It was always, it was always going to happen. This episode. This has always been about being mean spirited <laughs> to John. Now I don't know what I'm here for anymore. I suck at the game, <laughs> and now, you know, what's the point? Now your point is to beat him. Yeah, right. Fair and square. I'm a goddamn idiot. I can't even do math <laughs> with time in my head. <laughs> What is the answer to that question, by the way? Did you say it? Yeah. It's two hours and... 45 okay. minutes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do... I was going to play this whole thing about how you guys are going to ridicule me for using it on the second episode again. No, I... Look, oh, God. <laughs> Listen, I got some... I got some picks this season, all right? I got some picks. And, uh, you know... Well, this, is how I, this is how I want it to happen. Picks, plural. I, I can only wipe one of them. Yeah, I know. But he was obviously this was his throwaway. I don't want to watch the throwaway. But you want to punish him for thinking that he's smarter than us. <laughs> punish him by seeing through his tissue thin ruse. Like if you would have said, "Look, I know exactly what you're doing, and you're gonna watch that son of a bitch anyway," then you got him. No. Okay. Oh, look. I'm and say. then when he pulls out his his artsy fart fartsy panache pan, whatever it is film that he's gonna do, <laughs> and you say no, you ain't watching it. And he's like, oh, but I really like the uh, the head foley guy. Okay. And the, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. Me watching these movies is a very different experience from you two rubes watching these movies. I'm gonna got- say it again. I hope that you have hot fire diarrhea coming out of both ends again. <laughs> well, I ain't having any more hot or red lobster lunches anytime soon. Who eats so. lunch at Red Lobster, you fucking serial killer? <laughs> that is straight up psycho behavior. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that your family went. It's gross. Probably out of fear. <laughs> It's one thing to go by yourself. That's the that's the big dick move right there. Go to lunch by yourself at Red Lobster. <laughs> that would be the saddest story. Goes by himself to lunch at the Red Lobster and it's a blowing up his asshole. <laughs> There's always one there. Oh my god! It's 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 some uh, uh, like forty eight year old woman by herself at the bar every time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a tragic story she has to tell, I'm sure. Ugh. Okay, well. It's how I stay totally... so thin. <laughs> All the diarrhea? Yeah. <laughs> Between the Tito's and, and this old Texas old-timey crab shit boil. <laughs> Irregardless. <sighs> God. We're watching The Replicant, god damn it. Uh, Okay, announcements. The Patreon feedback. Thank you to everybody who has reached out and given us feedback on the Patreon, giving us suggestions, telling us what you want to hear again in the show. Thank you. Keep it coming, because we want to hear it. We need to compile more. Um, Does anybody else have any announcements to make? No. That isn't smart-ass announcements? No. About my ass or anything? I'm disappointed. <laughs> Listen, it was going to be... The next pick would have been like a talking pony? 
<laughs> I was going to I was going to draw it out. I actually thought that okay, this movie the movie we watched was great. I don't have a rant and then I ended up having a rant on you. See, that's the thing. Every every Son 3 episodes bitch. we would have had to have watched something unbearable. <laughs> At least do it on your terms though. <laughs> this, is, this is my terms. This, no, I watch this he movie. won, Chase. He fucking won round one. <laughs> and he knows he won. That's why he ain't saying much. <laughs> that crafty little son of a bitch. But really, that Josh Brolin thing's a real mystery, though. <laughs> he kept bringing that shit up, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, okay, time to close us out with our new segment, Say Something Nice. Do, I, do we even need to? We just spent an hour saying everything nice about that. <laughs> this yeah. movie was legit great. That's my think, Say Something I, I Nice. I my favorite thing was the twist at the end of The Brother. That, yeah. That's my something nice. Yeah. That whole sequence was expertly done. Yeah, but I could easily say it was the war flashback, it was the ninja's flashback, like... like <laughs> the flashback to the oh, random right. ninja was pretty damn good. The, uh, my, my hand is immune was good. <laughs> uh, Frankie Mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. The, the movie was just a home run. It was. It really was. So, save, save it, uh, Velocipaster. We're probably never going to say that about another movie ever in the, in the Say Something Nice. That it was yeah. just a great movie. Well, maybe Replicant. I got hopes. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> this could turn out to be gold and you know it. Well, I'm going out on a limb and saying this is going to be absolute dog shit. <laughs> but in a good way. Like, it's going to be good for us in the long run. But... It's not going to be a good movie. He's got the mind of a child. It's bad. It's bad <laughs> when we're going to come back and say, ah, it was a, it, you know, it was it was fun to shit on that movie, but it was no Velocipasta. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be like 43-year-old Van Damme. He's going to be like scared of cars and shit. <laughs> Hold on. And I may be a little premature here, but they're saying he's an idiot. But he still knows all his martial arts moves? Yeah, of course. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, either he's got the knowledge, right. or he doesn't. This thing's already got holes in it. He's start poking holes in everything. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a psychic connection to the torch. Then he should know what a car is. <laughs> it comes and goes. It's, it's, it's selective telepathy. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sure it'll all be explained. Just like while Alt why Altier was alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, I'm mad at <laughs> Thank you for listening to Garbage Theater. As always, you can find us online at facebook.com slash garbage theater, on Twitter at garbage underscore theater, and on Instagram at garbage underscore theater. If you'd care to leave us a review on iTunes, we would very much appreciate it. And if you have a movie suggestion or just want to reach out to us, you can contact us at any of our social channels or email us directly at garbagetheaterpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all the latest episodes and happenings. Good night, and see you next time, folks. Mm -hmm.